Chris. Yes. You finally saw Star Wars. Finally. I was five Chris, days late. Years of waiting since Revenge of the Sith in 2005. We finally got the proper Star Wars sequel we were all hoping for. Yes. Um, although at the time, I must say, when Phantom Menace came out, I was... I enjoyed the movie. I'm not ashamed to say that. Was it a great movie? No. I did enjoy it. I liked pod racing. Yes. And I, I liked the other elements of the movie. Attack of the Clones, never enjoyed that movie. Okay. Revenge of the Sith. By the time Revenge of the Sith came out, uh, the prequels had already become so set and not being a good movies that people did unfairly said it was terrible Mm -hmm. it wasn't good it wasn't great it was neutral it was a very neutral movie Mm -hmm. star wars are not star wars that being said chris the force awakens force awakens yep the force has awakened and we have a lot to say about it so let's go all right i saw it opening night Mm -hmm. loved it i was wanting to go opening night but I worked. I know. You and had I to was, work. I was ready. I was about to add. Did you ever sell your tickets? I did. I was able to get all of them Dang. taken care of. All right. Because I wanted to buy them off you if I, I was going to get there early. I know. But I couldn't hold them long enough for you. So when you said you'd have to work, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to ask the next person in mm-hmm. line. And they were like, done deal. Done deal. So you just got to do those things. Okay. So let's go ahead. We got, we're going to try and do this all in like 15, 20 minutes or until the camera clicks and we have to start over. And then yeah. we'll probably go for another hour. Yep. So. Let's start at the beginning. Okay. The movie opens. Mm-hmm. On Jakku. How'd you like that opening scene? The opening scene was great. Um, that was the first visual of Stormtroopers. The new Stormtroopers look great. Uh, okay. I'm not. They don't look classic. They no. look new. They're I guess edgy. I'm, I guess I'm just more classic. I kind of was hoping that we have the classic Stormtroopers, but I like the new ones. Okay. Well, I want to say this right off the bat, though. Chris... Those trailers that were coming out, I was really worried that those trailers were giving away a lot of the movie because mm. it looks that way. Yes. Most of those trailers happened in the first like 20 minutes of the movie. Mm-hmm. There was very few scenes in any of the trailers that happened after the first 20 minutes of the movie. Exactly. The main one being where Finn is holding that lightsaber. That was probably one of the few scenes... Okay, and the one where we see... Han and Finn and Chewbacca standing on Takadona with their hands behind their head. Yes. Most of the other scenes were all in the first 20 minutes of the movie. And then when Han Solo and Chewbacca says we're home, yeah, that was that about was in the middle also, of the movie. No, that was earlier than the middle of the movie. Was it really? Yeah, because that was right when they're leaving Jakku. Well, the Millennium Falcon takes yeah, off. You're right. It was very early in the movie. That's what I mean. Mm-hmm. All of those, maybe it was like 30 minutes into the movie. Yes. Okay. It was definitely not halfway. No. That's what, so the trailers were pieced together so well to make you think that you knew what was going to happen in that movie. Mm-hmm. And the, it's, I know we say this all the time about trailers, and I hate when trailers give away spoilers. And I was so worried that that trailer, especially yeah. the previous, the most recent Star Wars trailer, and it, it I must say J.J. Abrams did a great job pulling you in, thinking you knew more than you did. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that being said... I love the opening scene. Uh, I hate that they slaughtered all those people, but yeah. I love the visually of the stormtrooper with the flamethrower and Poe's character. Man, how good was Poe's? Was, that was oh, he's o- great. Um, Oscar Isaac played him, right? Mm-hmm. How good was his character? Very good. He runs to the X-Wing, can't take off, goes back, gets captured, and I love he's sitting there, and you can tell like he's kind of a lighthearted dude. He looks up at Kylo Ren and goes... I'm not sure it's supposed to happen here. Do I talk first? Do you talk first? That was it. One was of the just so good, and it didn't come across as like cheesy. No. I mean, it came across as like the amount of cheesy they intended it to. It the, was so good. I think what that's what I wanted to say in episode 49, but I didn't want to spoil it. But the amount of comedy in this movie was a very, very good amount, and it was good comedy. It was the right amount of comedy for what was going on. It didn't detract from. It wasn't like out of place, or it wasn't exactly. like you. It was like it wasn't like you're in this epic struggle. And I'm gonna say use epic loosely here, but you're in this struggle, 
and you're cracking jokes. It wasn't that kind of comedy. It was the comedy that we saw in the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. It wasn't it was dry. It good. wasn't. It wasn't inappropriate. It wasn't. No, it was just. Funny. It was classic. It was just good. It was just. It was really just good writing. Exactly. What it comes. It, it comes down to good writing and good delivery from the actors. It would be comedy of what you would see in a normal day to day basis. And that being like one of the first. I mean, the one of the first lines between characters, like Poe had talked to BB-8 at that point, and there was him talking to that old dude, mm-hmm. but it was the first interaction we really saw between someone and Kylo Ren. Yes. I, w- I mean, other than him yelling at all the stormtroopers, I guess. Mm-hmm. Also, how awesome was it that he could just stop bolts in the air like that? That was crazy. What's that all about? Um, that, that can't be canon. That's a very, that's a new thing. That's a new. That's, that's gotta a new be dark new. side power. Because Darth Vader didn't even do that. He let he, he had just the, blo- he, just he had the hand. indestructible glove. Mm-hmm. So he just blocked him with his indestructible glove, mm-hmm. and then force grab blasters. Exactly. Which is kind of cooler to have an indestructible glove that blasters can't shoot through. But lightsaber still cut through it because Luke cut, chopped exactly. his arm off. But, uh, yeah, that glove, man, the glove of Darth Vader, so cool. But, man, that force power where he could just, like, stop bolts. And then I like how his mind read, how, like, he couldn't do, like, he didn't do mind tricks on you. He had to, like, actually grab your skull and then, like, look into your head to find yes. what he was looking for. He couldn't just, like, trick you into saying it. Mm-hmm. It was a very interesting take on... I guess it wasn't a mind trick. It, it was, was a different like, style of He dark. was actually like going into your thoughts. Um, I was really hoping that Poe was going to resist him just because I was like, he was just such a is. cool character. Mm-hmm. Or not. Yeah, that was Poe, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just, it was cool though. I, I liked it. Um, so let's let's get on to Finn. Okay. John Boyega's character. Mm-hmm. How well did he play that stormtrooper? He pr- he played it very well. Um, his acting to act like a stormtrooper, even though he disagreed with the First Order, was really good. How they played he that was out. so convincing when he lands when they land, and you don't know which one he is because they all look the same. And when that guy gets shot and gets the blood, and he smears it. On the guy's helmet. That was when I was like, okay, that's, that's John Boyega's Stormtrooper. So now we know which one it is. Mm. So we can keep track of them all. So it's a good way to pinpoint who he is. It was so super we clever because you could already tell like some of the Stormtroopers were unsure because like some of them it was probably their first battle as we found out like with John Boyega. That mm. was Finn's first really mission once he was in the Stormtrooper, once he was in the First Order. And uh, he just, even with a mask on, you couldn't see his face. It was so convincing that you could tell he was unsure of himself and what he was doing. Mm. That um, when they like were all firing, and you could tell he didn't want to fire, but he also didn't want to get caught for insubordination. It was so good. And then when Kylo Ren doesn't abandon him, but takes him back with him anyways, even though he knows he didn't shoot. Yeah. That was good. And his character was very convincing the whole time. His acting. Uh, you could always... He never came across as too skilled at anything he was doing with one exception. We'll get to that. But for the most part, he came across as a very believable mm-hmm. character. I mean, as believable as one could be in Star Wars, mm-hmm. I suppose. Um, so yeah, they crash down on Jakku. He runs over to the TIE fighter. Well, first off, let's go back. Let's back up. He helps fit Poe escape. Finn helps Poe escape. And uh, what would you think of that tie fight? When he like, gets in, he's like, I've always wanted to pose. Like, I've always wanted to fly one of these things. And it's still connected. And it's still connected. That right there was funny to me. That was one of those comedy things that they would have tried to do in the, the prequel trilogy mm-hmm. and just wouldn't have come across well. But they did it really well in this one. It was still funny, but it's something that most likely would have happened. Yeah, it was a very believable scenario that was funny, but also like, oh no, what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. Are they going to get caught again? Um, I love that Finn was like, I know how to shoot a blaster. And he's like, oh yeah, it's basically the same. And then told him all the controls and he was like, I don't know what you just said. <laughs> it took him a while to figure out how to shoot things, how to hit things. 
the character development was done. Yes. It was speedy enough that the movie wasn't boring, but it was also done in a, a mostly a very believable mm-hmm. sense. The did you notice that the Tie Fighter noises are an octave up a little bit? I hadn't noticed that. I did notice that they look different, and I like the new They're design. They're darker, yeah. I like the they new design. They still stay the same. They've got a little bit of chrome on them, but the octave up on the sound of them is a little bit more. I hadn't noticed that, but I also... The sound effects, to me, were great. Also, while we're talking about effects, how great were those practical effects that they used? Yes. So, so little CGI. Now, I personally didn't feel like any of the CGI stuck out. No. Um, I've heard other people who are like, oh, yeah, you could tell when they went to CGI scenes and stuff. And like some people are looking for that because they want to complain about it. If you're just enjoying the movie, I, like you're really not going to. I enjoyed it. Didn't notice one thing. You're not. I mean, you know, like, OK, the lightsaber is CGI. Mm-hmm. And there's a few times where like the lightsabers didn't look where Kylo Ren's lightsaber specifically did not look great. I don't know why his it, had it, a hard time coming across well. It wasn't a, a traditional straight beam lightsaber it was more of a not even the beam i just sword. yeah it just it looked it looked like a jagged the light sword. didn't look right mm-hmm. and like it never it didn't round off correctly on the mm-hmm. end just small things like that but nothing that really took away from the movie no like the scene where days where ray is down and he like has a lightsaber up to her that scene always bothered me in the trailer because the, the lightsaber looks so bad mm-hmm it's not a classic looking lightsaber. No, it just it's not even the fact that it's like red and that it has the extra Yeah. Side it's just bolts. it looks it just doesn't look right. Now Luke Skywalker's original lightsaber still the Which was Anakin's original lightsaber. Yes, the hilt still looks the same. Yeah, it's exactly it's the one he loses in Cloud City when his hand gets chopped off. Yes. 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 How did she find it? Nobody seems to know. Mm. But I don't think it's unreasonable. I mean, Cloud City floats above Bespin, which is a gas giant, sure, because they're mining the gas. But is it unreasonable that there could have been a mining platform below that chute that it fell on? Possibly. Because it fell over the platform. Down. Right. It fell down into the garbage chute, the same one that Luke falls through. Yes. Luke grabs onto the hanging antennas. The lightsaber has no hands. It keeps falling. It keeps falling. But I don't think that's the hardest thing to explain. It's no. a trade port, so someone would have found it, brought it into trade or whatever. That's not completely... That's not my my biggest issue with the lightsaber showing up, so no. whatever. I thought that was just very interesting how they portrayed that. Yeah. Um. So, Ray, Daisy Ridley's character. Attractive. Okay, well, yeah. I'm going to say that. In this but I just meant her acting. Oh, her acting is incredible. <sighs> Dude, she completely stole that show oh definitely like i'm not i'm not just saying that because like it's a girl whatever i mean she she really did a very good job i'm excited to see what they do in the near future as and and i felt the same way about john boyega he just blew me away Mm -hmm. neither of them were i mean big name actors they've been in very small roles before this uh john boyega only has a few movies in his imdb and uh, they both just completely blew me away. I was very happy with their performance. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Ray, uh, I thought her character was very was well done. Yes, I didn't feel like it, her skills were unbelievable. Maybe she developed her force powers a little fast. I that was the only issue I had. This is the first movie that we've also seen that someone who does not have uh, Jedi powers also well, wield a lightsaber. I mean, a lightsaber well, saber. we see Han Solo cut open a Tauntaun in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. And so it's not unheard of for someone that doesn't have force sensitivity mm-hmm. to use a lightsaber, to turn one on and use it. It's the using it effectively in battle that is different. That was different to me. That's what I was trying to grasp. And it was interesting to see Finn use it I mean, I guess the stormtroopers, okay, one thing, whatever. He obviously has trouble with it and gets, he's about to get destroyed by the stormtrooper and get saved. But uh, when he fights Kylo Ren, that was something. Yes. And the fact that he held his own for a little bit was very cool and also kind of strange. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I'm not saying that I didn't like the direction they went because it kind of shows that one, Kylo Ren is unsure of himself. Yes. He's not completely... He shows it well. ...sure of 
you know, who he is, how to fight well. You know, he's very, he has a lot of rage, but he doesn't have really much control over what he's doing. Like, we see him multiple times in the movie just destroy things with his lightsaber for no reason. Anger. Uh, whereas Darth Vader would have just choked whoever told him yeah. the bad news. So, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, I thought I thought it was cool to see someone use a lightsaber that well. Because, I mean, like, we've seen other things where people without a lightsaber effectively fight a Jedi. Mm-hmm. But not using a lightsaber. Using, mm-hmm. like, a, a vibro sword or something like that. So, I don't know everyone's beef with that issue. Um... I get where they're coming from, yeah. but it's not unheard of to see people that don't have force sensitivity hold their own against the Jedi. Mm-hmm. I think, well, now that you go back to his anger issues, when Rey escaped mm-hmm. and he went in there and he just started destroying everything around him and the yeah. two stormtroopers walked around the corner <laughs> and, and like, they like stopped. backed up. That's the comedy that I love. That was great. It was great comedy. Because it was believable. It was very believable. I would have done the same thing. Yeah. Um... Should we go ahead and go to... Okay, so let's get... Oh, we're 16 minutes yeah. in, almost 17 minutes in. Should we just go ahead and skip to the worst part let's of the whole movie? Let's skip to the worst. Yes. When Han Solo walks out on that bridge and seals his fate. He is the father. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Ky- Kylo Ren is Han and Leia's kid. Yes. Um, it has been confirmed that Han and Leia did get married, had the, had him... Send him off for training. Send him to Luke to for training with the new Jedi Order that Luke was trying to establish. Kylo Ren gets seduced by the dark side by Snoke, I believe is who they said, Snoke. right? And just kills everyone. Again. Okay, so, All right, so he goes out on the bridge. He walks out on the bridge. Kylo Ren. Anyway, so yeah, he walks out on the bridge. And Kylo Ren takes off his helmet because he calls him Ben, which I guess is his actual name, Ben Solo. And he's like, I need help with this conflict inside of me and it's interesting we see han solo we see character development he actually cares about this guy someone for once whereas before he would have been out of there he would have shot him and just ran he would have never put his life on that risk um he goes out there and i really think he does it for leia is why he does Mm -hmm. it because leia truly believes he can be saved and he feels like it's his fault that he turned to the dark side so he goes out there, and Kylo Ren tricks him into thinking he can help him, hands him his lightsaber, and holds on to it as if it's hard for him to let go, and turns it on and stabs him through the heart. And he basically is like, I'm forever bad, and kicks him off the bridge. Chewbacca goes crazy, starts shooting everything in sight. Yeah. Honestly, that was the point where I almost walked out of the movie theater. But it was. But I couldn't. It was so good, and yet so bad. Bad, that but I'm, it was. It wasn't bad. Like it was done bad. It was so bad because it was like such a, a stab in the heart. You because know? he's been there for four episodes, and you think he's going to be there in in and like and more. Everyone knows that Harrison Ford doesn't particularly enjoy no. playing Han Solo, and he's one of his character to die since the eighties. So it's like not a surprise that's the direction they went. Yeah, it's the easy way out for everyone. But it was just, Han Solo was just such a believable character still. Mm-hmm. To see him die like that shows character development that he's actually grown over the last 30 years. But man, that hurts. It was the whole, it was just because everyone was trying to fight over a map, a piece of a map. Man, and how about that map? R2-D2 finally wakes up, comes Twilight. in. And he's got Him and BB-8 BB-8. show that map. They find Luke Skywalker. And the movie ends with Kylo, not with Kylo Ren, with Rey holding out Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber towards Luke. No words are said. Just like a minute and a half of panoramic shots of them looking at each other. Also, Mark Campbell's looking pretty old. He is, that, but it that looks just like him. hair and gray beard. Oh, yeah. He's aged well, yes. all things considered. So, my favorite characters, Chewbacca, BB-8, oh, Chewbacca, and Rey. of course. Uh, Chewbacca's a give me. Um, John Boyega character so well. And probably Ray. I'm probably going to yep. go with the new characters in Chewbacca. Also, man, how great was it when C3PO pops up? With a red arm. With that red arm. He's like, <laughs> cut 
worked at Solo. It's me, C-3PO. You he, probably don't recognize me because I have a red <laughs> arm. He literally, it's like this touching moment between Leia and Han Solo. It was just classic C-3PO. And then he just pops up because that's just who he Every is. Every time Han and Leia are having a moment, C-3PO pops up. pops up. Every time. Every it was, time. It was just, it was what I needed, you know? Mm-hmm. C-3PO is not exactly my favorite character because he's not supposed to be. No, he's the most annoying. He's supposed to be. He's the Jar Jar Binks. But like, uh, it was just. It was so perfect. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Um, we're gonna have to wrap this up, Chris, because yeah. I don't know when the camera's yeah, gonna exactly. die again. We already gonna have that weird exactly. cut in the middle. So, final thoughts. Eight out of ten. Great movie. Great movie. Uh, where do you think it ranks with the other Star Wars? Um, I would say number rank number three. Rank three. So, you, which ones are you putting in front of it? Uh, Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back. Um. Force Awakens, uh, New Hope, A New Hope. So you agree with my order now? Yes. Before and then, we talked, you were sounding like A New Hope yeah. was a better movie. And then Revenge of the Sith. Wait. Yeah, Revenge of the Revenge Sith. Revenge of the Sith. Then Phantom Menace. Phantom then Menace Attack and the then Attack of the Clones. Which surprised most people on the internet would put Attack of the Clones above Phantom Menace. What are they thinking? I have have no they idea. seen Attack of the Clones? That movie is half a terrible love story. Exactly. Mostly. But still. Anakin's part. Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen. Not a good actor. Worst choice in the world. The only movie that Jake he did. Jake Lloyd could have played that part better. <laughs> the only movie that he did well was uh, Jingle All the Way. No, that was Jake Lloyd. No, who was. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, same one. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hayden Christensen. Um, that was just a bad. He just. <laughs> it was an awful movie. Ewan McGregor saved that movie. That's all I'm going to say mm-hmm. about Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. Without Ewan McGregor, those movies would have been a lot worse. Also, when... Well, we better just wrap this up because this the camera is going exactly. to die soon. So that is our very brief spoiler review, Star Wars. Um, I could talk about this all day. Yeah, we can. And I, the same thing happened at work when we got all the movie. I was like, I got to go back to work because I could just sit here and talk about this. <laughs> all day and i'd like to but we just can't we don't want to give you like a three hour long youtube video so once the movie's been out a little bit longer we'll freely talk about it on the podcast and stuff or if you want to talk to us about it directly just go to our twitter pages and uh, we could set up like a little google hangouts and talk about it that'd be nice i have a group of guys that play star wars commander with and we have a chat room that we all sit in and talk about the movie it's a lot of fun also star wars is great I would rank this, I'm probably going to rank Jedi as my favorite still. And then it gets hard between Empire and Force Awakens. Mm. Most and, and most people I've talked to, if they like, most people are still saying Empire is the best Star Wars movie, and then Force Awakens, and then Jedi. Ooh, it's tough. Man. It's tough, man. Very they tough. were. It was such a good movie. Yeah. But I really like Jedi. Yep. And I really like Empire. Real quick, I like how they kind of made it to where it can be a standalone movie they wanted it to. Kind of like how... There were so many parallels to A New Hope. That's exactly. a completely... Exactly. I don't know if it just clicked I don't think not. it did. Okay. It's a completely different topic. Yeah, that's something we can So many to parallels that. to A New Hope. It was great. Yep. I loved it. The movie was great. Seriously, well, if you're watching this, you've already seen it, because otherwise you wouldn't have wanted all those spoilers. Exactly. Han Solo's dead. Long live Han Solo. That was a, that was a Star Trek reference. <laughs> what the heck? Anyways, the Millennium Falcon also great. Lives on. I love how they introduced it. Exactly. I love back. how um, Ray couldn't fly it for the longest mm-hmm. time. And how they did that one I shot. I love how the motivator was dead again. Yep. Always uh, classic. It was just so good. She's the new pilot of Millennium uh, it Falcon. It was so good, so good. I feel terrible for Chewbacca. Uh, I don't feel so terrible for Leia because Carrie Fisher just she aged. She is not a good actress. Never, I've never felt like she has been. It's nothing against her personally. Like I hear personally, she's a great person. Yes. Other than her little drug issue she had in the yeah. late '80s, I hear she's a great person. But I just don't think she's a great actress, and I I don't feel bad saying that because it's nothing against her personally. Mm. There's always that one. Actor. It's not like Hayden Christensen where I'm just like, dude, no, get, just get off. Or. Uh, 
Michelle Rodriguez. That's man, fine. What happened? They, they were probably up. halfway through the movie. Like, well, he's already. Well, we've got to keep him. It's for too another late. Three, it's too late. Anyways, three. like I said, we could go on about Star yeah, Wars exactly. forever. So, thanks for joining us. Uh, if you want to see the weekly flare, just go to theweeklyflare.com and everything is there. We'll catch you guys later. Peace.